is a course title that is stock market operations and it is a course is offered by department of commerce university of kerala the course consists of two credits and uh, uh, this is a generic course offered by department of commerce that is uh, the aiming at uh, so these are the uh, program specific outcomes so uh, so we aim that to acquire knowledge about the trading mechanism of the stock and derivative market among the students and uh, we essentially request uh, to reach the skill uh, set the students will be equipped to trade and invest in the stock market and derivative market and these are the course outcomes uh, the first one is recognize the logic of investment in shares and the stock market product as we know the kerala is where literate uh, literacy level kerala is good but financial literacy level kerala is not that much good as compared to other states so uh, and also we uh, find that the kerala people are uh, you know hesitate to invest in stock market uh, and they are uh, you know more con concentrated on the traditional investment like bank deposits post office etc so uh, some uh, the the thing which we understand that is uh, they are reluctant to invest stock market because of the lack of awareness and they feel that it is a very risky investment investment etc so uh, so one of uh, the course outcome is recognize the logic of investment in shares and the stock market products and second one is uh, identify the process of uh, issue of shares to the public in the primary market that identification uh, of the process of issue of shares to the public in the primary market and course outcome three uh, understand the process of trading through a dmat account with a broker and course outcome four uh, understand the clearing and settlement process in stock exchanges and course outcome number five evaluate the pros and cons of investing in stock market and course outcome number five understand the types of derivatives and derivative trading operations in the indian stock market so these are the course outcomes uh, so uh, in practice uh, this course outcome uh, has to be reached by students after completing the course so for uh, for reaching these course outcomes we will have modules so the next slides uh, deals with the modules the module one that is investment basic so the first uh, thing we taught uh, in investment basics is why should one invest so what is the purpose of investment and what are the investment avenues available which which include stock market investment avenues and other the bank deposit post office gold etc real estate etc so we provide uh, the uh, reasons uh, logics behind the investment as a famous popular invest investor in the world as warren buffett rightly said that first you save and then uh, spend so the savings and investment is a very essential thing for determining the uh, you know uh, success of a human being life so otherwise he he or she has to face many risks many situations where he essentially find finance from others people so we went to start investing and uh, the career goal of uh, you know investing when to start investment and and also the the main thing is there is options available in investment stock exchanges so we uh, we we taught uh, various options available for the stock market investment like equity shares debentures bonds uh derivatives uh, and exchange traded funds etc in mutual funds etc so equity share uh, we will have a detailed explanation on equity shares what is equity share what are the rights of equity shares mm -hmm. the major rights are you know uh, getting of uh, dividend uh, dividend it's a part of profit of the company that uh, is uh, provided by the company to the shareholders and also they have, will have the right to vote uh, uh, during the meeting of the company 
And debangers, debangers is exactly opposite of shares. Debanger holders do not have the right to vote in the meeting and they are not providing the dividend. They are just debtors of the company and the company will repay the debt and the company will uh, pay interest to the debanger holders. They are the debangers are the debt, debt holders of the company. And there is another option derivative which will be uh, detailed in the module 5. I will uh, give you some information uh, while explaining that slide. And mutual funds now, uh, mutual funds is very important instruments. Many people, you know, they, uh, you know, they invest mutual funds only rather than direct uh, issue of shares. So mutual funds uh, are, uh, you know, very fantastic uh, financial assets in the sense that uh, a person cannot uh, understand the intricacies of the stock market also can invest mutual funds. Anybody can invest mutual funds. So just invest mutual funds by understanding the funds quality and funds performance and all. Just you keep money in the mutual funds and mutual funds provide return. You know, some of the mutual funds provide uh, 15 to 25 percentage return. So maybe uh, based on the risk perception of the investors, uh, we can invest according to the different mutual funds. It's like very risky investors can invest in small cap funds. So if a person with, uh, you know, not taking much risk, uh, risk covers investors can, uh, you know, uh, select a large cap funds, etc. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> so index, index uh, is also very important uh, in investing mutual funds. Index funds are there. So index is a measurement of the growth of stock exchange. So we have two indices like uh, Sensex and Nifty are the major indexes. So similarly, many indexes in connection with the Sensex and Nifty. So we have Nifty 50 and Sensex for the 30 stocks. And similarly, we have Nifty 500, Nifty 100, Nifty for Bank X, the Nifty for ITs. Okay, so many indexes. And depository is also a very significant part in stock exchange after dematerialization. So, uh, Depositories are the two main depositories available in India, that is NSDL and CDSL. And uh, they are providing the custodian services of the uh, shares and other instruments. They are holding the instruments, actually. They are the custodian of the instrument. So now the dematerialization process, physical certificates are not available. So dematerialization means transfer of physical certificate into electronic form. Now the electronic form and we have a screen based trading. So there is no physical certificate. We can see in the uh, only electronic certificate. These electronic certificates are under the custody of depository. So whenever a broker purchase or sells something, so it is transferred to depository. You getting a message from the depository that they are holding these shares. If you are selling, you will get a message that 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 much shares uh, will be debited uh, from the depositories account so you are uh, when you start a dematerialization account uh, with a broker and uh, the depository account also uh, automatically created okay so this is the first module uh, the investment objectives of investment when to start investment what are the investment avenues what are the investment avenues in the stock market and i have uh, one thing i forget that is actual return and real return and time value of money concept so this is also very important uh, you know the actual return and real return concept I will say an example. If you uh, if you invest in uh, you know if you invest in uh, uh, equity shares, you will get uh, maximum of uh, it depends. If you get if you will get twenty to twenty five percent sometimes. But if you if you invest in fixed deposit, you will get maximum seven percent. That is the maximum rate of return provided by any of the banks in India, and. Uh, uh, you can find that the approximate inflation rate of the country economy is 7 percentage. So the actual return is 7 percentage. What is your real return? So real return means the 7 percentage due to inflation you are losing. So that the real return is 0 percentage. That is 7 minus 7. Actual return is 7 and inflation is 7. 7 minus 7, 0 return. So you will not get any return from your investment. So that there is a scope of stock market invest that provides more return, but it is really risky in terms of the principal amount will not be safe. 
if you invest in a fixed deposit your principal amount you whatever investment 10 lakhs you invest the 10 lakhs will be safe but in stock market there is a chance if there is a risk and uh, if uh, you have invested shares that is decreasing the value your principal amount is may not be safe and it will be reduced but what happen if if it is performing you will get more than 20 to 25 percentage return so the stock market consider the time value of money concept and uh, time value of money means discounting um, principle and the inflation uh, inflation principle etc so this time value of money uh, as per the principle of time value of money stock market return is the only one source of uh, investment which uh, make up the time value of money concept okay so these are about the first module and the second one that is a primary market so primary market uh, is a, uh, there are two market that is primary market and secondary market primary market is for the fresh issue of shares debentures etc so uh, uh, you know uh, so there are two options two routes available in primary market that is ipo and fpo ipo means initial public offer fpo means further public offer ipo means whenever a company first time it goes to the public they issue ipo initial public offer uh, and you can find that uh, recently uh, lic of india uh, they have done an ipo and lic was fully owned by the government right now also fully owned by the government but uh, 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 they are interested uh, to the to go uh, for the public for collection of funds so that uh, they invited ipo and they done it uh, and now lic is a public limited company so anybody can purchase shares of ipo i mean shares of lic so after IPO, LIC shares were listed in recognized stock exchanges like Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange. Now, now anybody can purchase the shares of uh, LIC during the market timing because after that the IPO was done and the number of shares issued during the IPO, they were listed. Okay. So FPO means quite different from IPO. When, a, when an existing company, actually LIC is done with the IPO, if after two years sometimes lic essentially requires some more funds lic can do an fpo because it is already listed company they raise further they wanted to raise some money from the public that is further public offer okay so ipo and fpo it is for the public limited companies only what is private placement private placement is for the private companies uh, and actually you know uh, the company issues shares to their friends and families and their relatives, etc. So they don't want to uh, lose control of the company to the public. Okay, so they wanted to own the company their own way so that the private placement. So the private placement is done by the private limited companies. So whenever a company, you know, issuing IPOs and FPOs, they are doing through, uh, doing through book building process. So book building is a very important process. Uh, so nowadays all the IPOs are moving with the book building process. Book building is an advertisement through a prospectus and it consists of a price band. Say for example, 100 to 120. If it is 100, uh, 100 to 120, you can fix a price between 100 and 120, that is 100, 101, 102 till 120. And finally, the book runner or the company will decide the price in which the IPO has been done. So if you fix the 100, sometimes you may not get the shares, your application money may be rejected because many of the people have opted for 120, the maximum price. So we should be careful about fixing of prices in the price band uh, while uh, in the process of book building process so so this price band will be helpful for the company or the book building will be helpful for the company to fix the price so book building is conducted to for a price discovery mechanism of ipo so after book building process people 
apply shares and if uh, if if their money is not sufficient their application money is re application is rejected and and uh, refunded so it has been done through a separate account known as separate concept known as asba application supported by blocked amount so what is asba in earlier when we apply book building process soon after the application our money will be credit debited from our bank account so after one and a half months or two months the company fixed us the price of ipo and uh, allotment of shares will be taken place accordingly but sometimes our application may be rejected because of the low price band or something like that or over subscription over subscription in the sense that if the company for example if the company uh, you know uh, issues only 1000 uh, 1 lakh shares but the applications were 2 lakh shares so the 1 lakh applications may be rejected so so many of the people will not be eligible for getting of shares in the ipo process so one and a half months your money will be blocked and you will not get interest now the asba system the money will not be debited at the time of uh, application of uh, application and your money will be debited only at the time of issuing shares so that the investors interest savings bank interest will not be loose so that is a idea of asba application supported by blocked amount and after uh, you know after initial public offer your shares will be listed so listed in the recognized stock exchange so there are list you can find that list a b c like uh, based on the quality of the shares and uh, uh, when when the a company shares you know listing in the official list of the stock exchange it is known as listing of shares so in the primary market also there are intermediaries working bankers working in book building process ipo process brokers working in the book build book ipo process underwriters are there so these are people as known as are known as intermediaries so there is an uh, there is an surveillance mechanism there is a regulator in the primary market and who is responsible to regulate the activities of the primary market that is sebi securities and exchange board of india so sebi regulate the primary market activities so you can go detail with the sebi's functions in primary market as well as sebi's functions in secondary market so these are both the module second that deals with the primary market so next is second uh, module three that is secondary market so secondary market major one is stock exchanges uh, so secondary market means the stock exchange so secondary market we can deal only through stock exchange so from stock exchange, we can buy and sell these securities. You can buy and sell bonds. You can buy and sell government securities. You can buy and sell shares. You can buy and sell uh, exchange traded funds. You can buy and sell mutual funds, etc. So this is for secondary market. And in secondary market, we use indices to, to understand the performance uh, of the shares in that particular index that is uh indices the major indices i already said that is sensex and nifty so there are uh, uh, subsidiary indices there are a lot of indices uh for a sectoral uh classifications for it separate index for a bank separate index for reality separate index uh but altogether nifty 50 and sensex 30 which constitute the most prominent indexes in india so uh, this Nifty and Sensex performance shows the growth of the capital market. So if it is in long term, uh, you know, sustainable growth, uh, 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 we can find uh, if we plotted uh, a curve based on the data set of uh, the past data set. So now stock trading. So talk, stock trading means trading of stocks, the buying of selling of stocks. Now st stock trading is happening through screen based mode. So anybody can sell, uh, purchase, sell shares through an application or uh, you can uh, through internet. So now every broker has uh, uh, runs its own mobile applications. You can install the mobile applications and you can buy and sell uh, through that application. Okay, so you can place orders with brokers, you can find the price codes. And after a trading, you will get a document that is contract note. So contract note is a document which shows the 
trade details. So what amount of price in which you buy, what amount of price in which you sell. So the contract note, what is the profit, what is the loss. So everything is available in contract note. So, so these are the, uh, and different types of orders also we are using. So we have explained all these things in the class that is uh, uh, limit order is there, market order is there, stop loss order is there, there stop loss market order is there. So uh, these orders are using, uh, depends on the situations. So, so there are situations in which we can place limit order. There are situations we can place market order. There are situations we can place stop loss uh, order, stop loss limit or stop loss market order. And next is precautions for investing in the stock market. So there are precautions. So we can find many uh, uh, traders, investors. They are all uh, heterogeneous in nature. And some, some people are biased. Some people are overconfident. Some people are, you know, very greedy. Some people are, they are, uh, they have herding biases. So we have to avoid all these biases. So we, what we essentially require is rationality. So if a person, rational person, he can find, uh, he can uh, find a very good position in the market. So, so that the precautions are to be taken and there are do's and don'ts in stock market and all these things we explain in the class. So do's and don'ts in the stock market. So about module three, that is secondary market, which, which totally deals with secondary market and module four, which shows the clearing and settlement mechanism. So clearing and settlement means if a trade taken place, what will be the settlement? How will be the settlement taken place? Like uh, if a person buys shares and uh, uh, what much time it will take to get back the shares. If a person sells shares, what much time it will take to uh, get uh, uh, the money uh, into his credit. So earlier we used the public outcry system and the settlement process is very slower, like T plus seven, T plus eight, etc. Now it is, uh, you know, rolling settlement like T plus two is the time of, uh, you know, time of, uh, Settlement trade day plus two day in which you can uh, get shares and you can credit uh, you will get credit uh, money etc. So that is the settlement process, but the, the settlement process is T plus two in the cash market and T plus one in the derivative market. So derivative market settlement is quite fast because the ownership of the uh, instrument is not passing. Uh, uh, between the traders and derivative market, so the the uh, the incremental value only uh, transacted in derivatives so that settlement is uh, becoming very fast t plus one is happening in the derivative market and next there are speculators speculators are you know they're very short term traders so they do buy and sell for the purpose of making short term profit and you can find many speculators bulls buyers lacks say lame uh, etc stacks uh, lambda etc so they 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 do like uh, uh, trading uh, and they, they are not investors but what we actually aiming at the investment a uh, long term holding of shares that will provide uh, a good uh, good uh, nature of uh, capital formation of the country and uh, the companies you know they are uh, they will grow according to the capital mobilized from the capital market so uh, secondary market also these intermediaries uh, will be functioning like uh, underwriters bankers brokers etc so next is role and functions of sebi sebi is also you know uh, uh, has very significant role in secondary market in terms of regulation development uh, etc regulatory powers are there and development powers are also the separate powers are also you can read from the books to understand uh, sebi's powers and the investors protection fund so this fund is created by the sebi for protection of investors if any loss or something like uh, happening uh, uh, to the investors uh, sebi's protection fund will be used to compensate the investors so that is investors protection fund 
Okay, so this is about clearing and settlement uh, system of uh, stock exchange and clearing and settlement, clearing of derivative, clearing of uh, cash market, investment versus speculation, role and functions of SEBI, etc. And the last uh, module is derivative market. Derivatives uh, are a very important thing. So, uh, what is the role of derivative, significance of derivative that is very important? So in cash market, there is a change volatility happen. If we are holding, you know, if we are holding some uh, shares, we don't want to sell the shares actually. But sometimes uh, that particular shares will be, uh, value will be reduced because of the market volatility and all. But at the same time, we need, we don't want to sell that shares. So how we can overcome the losses from the cash market or hedge the losses from the cash market through derivative market. The basic purpose of derivative market is provide hedging opportunities. How we can hedge? I will say an example. If uh, you know you are holding Reliance Industry shares and you feel that the Reliance Industry shares are going to fall, so the same time you can go to the derivative market and take a position of a short future or a put option of uh, derivative and the loss you know the loss from the cash market can be set off uh, from the uh, profit derived from the derivative market that's the idea of derivative market so we have uh, mainly four product of derivative that is forward futures options and swaps so forwards are the traditional derivative the forward we can do with the uh, shares uh, but the forwards are uh, happening outside the exchange. Forwards are not permitted in exchange. So uh, forwards are done in out uh, over the counter market, over the counter uh, trading way. That's any people can, uh, you know, make a forward contract. Forward contract are not standardized. So any quantity we can do that. Forward contract is there is no surveillance mechanism of exchange. So that forward contracts are very risky. Uh, because of counterparty risk. If any one of the party violates the contract, the other party may have the only option to sue against him. So there is no surveillance of the exchange. It is not permitted in the exchange. There is no standardization of contract. All the contracts are customized and there is no surveillance and no regulation. Okay, so that is the case of forward contract. So this due to the advant uh, disadvantages of forward contract, futures contract uh, were introduced uh, and future contract, you know, uh, uh, it is permitted in exchange. So options, swaps, uh, the swaps are also not permitted in exchange. So swaps are also, you know, uh, done uh, in over the counter market. So swaps and only for futures and options are permitted in exchange. So futures, you know, their, their uh, you know, payoff are symmetrical or linear. So if you are in long position or a buy future, you are expecting a increase in prices and uh, based on the increase in prices, you, will, you are getting profit. That is the profit is an unlimited day. But if you are in long position, if the spot prices is decreasing, you are uh, losing it in an unlimited way. So that is again a linear payoff. So we cannot stop the profit and we cannot stop the losses. So due to this advantage, options were introduced. So options, we can limit the losses. So if we are in a long position, the profit position is unlimited, but the loss position is limited to the amount of premium we paid. So that is importance of options. So swaps is simultaneous purchase and sales. Swaps we can do with the bank deposit, interest rate, foreign exchange, etc. So again, these swaps are you know done in outside exchange. It is not permitted in exchange. So these are about the module uh, five that is derivative market. So basic understanding only is required in derivative. Okay. So thank you.